Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. She is Inger, your host. I'm Elmo the Burgermeister, and this is the only podcast with twice the caffeine and none of that nasty aftertaste. <laughs> and hundredth episode that we have come to, this one that you're on right now, is the hundredth. That's ten times ten. <laughs> All right, never mind. Y'all ten, got ten. it. A hundred is a lot. Most don't most don't make it this far True. because of whatever comes and they give up or, you know, things they got to be under construction or put it on hold. We are going to have the best moments over the last 100 episodes. We're going to talk about the Irish global minimum tax and President Biden's President Joe bumbling. <laughs> President yeah. Joe bumbling speech of the week. <laughs> That's what Biden means in Norwegian. I got you, right? I just translated it. <laughs> it's translated. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So where would you like to start? <laughs> uh, everybody knows who Andrew Yang is. Mm-hmm. Ran for president. Um, one of the only people on the Democrat ticket that I was listening to, paying attention to, had some new ideas that I... I might have considered voting for if he got the nomination okay. and heard within the last week that he is leaving the party. Wow. He's leaving the Democrat party. Yeah. He's leaving the Democrats. Did he say why? I didn't hear why I didn't hear, but there, there is a, uh, a, a disagreement and a disparity of the directions that they want to go in. Okay. So from what I remember, he was pretty far left. Is it because they're not, far left enough or they're too far left? Well, it is because he is not leftist, wokeist, cancerless <laughs> enough, environmentalist. He's not going to spend time talking about open a border and let immigrants in here. Oh. So too much of their agenda, he doesn't want to support. Okay. So you, you got you got the left you got the far left, you got liberals and people that are, you know, right before the moderate borderline. Yeah. And uh, the party is just very divided. Uh-huh. And there's a lot of backstabbing going on in oh, the okay. Democrat Party. OK, who's who's backstabbing who? Oh, well, the, the let, let's go back to the, the election with Hillary, Hillary and Trump. Oh, the Hill the Beast. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. When they were running against each other, uh, the Democrat Party sabotaged and uh, stabbed in the back Bernie Sanders. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was running on the Democrat ticket. Yes. And um, in, in the primaries, he was doing very well. 10 out of 11 primaries or 10 out of 11 cities that he went to, he won. Okay. He really should have gotten the the nomination he was running ahead of hillary by leaps and bounds okay okay but they don't they don't like him they don't Uh, like him i mean agenda is one thing but another thing is is personality Mm -hmm. she she's a clinton she is royalty yes they they like her they wanted her to be on television every day with a different outfit with all the women you know let's bring out the runway and the red carpet and just you know, Bernie is a is an old guy and he's hard and they don't like his style. You know, he ran on the Democrat ticket because they're closer to his agenda than the Republican ticket. Right. Some people still don't know this. And they may not know it because mainstream media isn't telling you the mm-hmm. head of the Democrat Party had to resign. Because oh. there was there was unequivocal proof in email that she was talking about how to cut Bernie Sanders and keep him down and keep him back and how to push and promote Hillary to the forefront. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not as open as they like to say they are then. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you think about um, and, uh, the, the Democrat Party is not the Communist Party, but they're all on the left. Yes. Okay. Communist is the extreme of what it leads to. And you think about the fact that that Stalin and Putin and a lot of these a lot of these people killed their own people. Yes, they did. They're yep. members of their their party, of yes. their government, of their military. Yes. Yang, he doesn't he doesn't uh, strike me as a puppet or a party man or a guy who's corrupted. You know how uh, Elizabeth Warren and all these people, they spew these lies and yeah. they give out false statistics and false facts, expecting you not to check them out. I never heard um, I never heard Yang put out anything that was a false statement. Right. OK. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you you got to You got to get in line with that. They must have meetings, Inger. What I said, listen, your lies need to line up with my lies. <laughs> so we get there, we back each other up, back to back. We go in there and then, you know, so, you know, like two people that are brought in for questioning for, yes. for uh, a criminal. Yeah, uh, they, they, they separate them so they don't talk to each other. To corroborate the same lie. You know? right. <laughs> now, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, Bernie is an independent as well, as well as um, oh, I just his name just slipped me. But he's no longer in, Lieberman. Um, you oh yeah, a, an independent as well. So yeah. that's probably where they end up landing. So <laughs> quote unquote independent party will be interesting in terms of its composition and makeup. <laughs> Joe Lieberman, right? Joe Lieberman, yes. Yeah, he's he's one of the all the all the Democrats who I even consider voting for. They leave. They leave. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what is that? They always try to aim for president, vice president, Senate, you know, Congress, whatever. They right. always try to aim there instead of starting. Start locally. You know, you got to make yep. some inroads somewhere. You, you just can't go for the big the big ticket right away you have to start making inroads and you got to win at the local levels and i haven't seen where they can win at the local levels just haven't seen it i know we're going off the rail a little bit and yeah. uh, because of what you just said i just want to inject something there there's a woman who's running for the mayor of atlanta okay and her last name is gay i think is sharing gay okay right she's got commercials where she's promoting things that she'll do to help the city Mm-hmm. The 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 mentality of black Democrats, the mentality of black Democrats is they will never vote for a white person to be the mayor of Atlanta. It doesn't matter if she is a Democrat. Mm-hmm. That's just the way black Democrats are thinking, because yeah. uh, you want to talk about trickle down the trickle down mentality from the Democrats got the black people and got us thinking we don't want to give up our power back to them. Mm-hmm. We, we just want to paint stuff black. We don't care right. what's behind it. Right. So it really doesn't matter what she does or what what she says. Right. You know, I, I told you that there's a flow chart. Want to vote Democrat. If the Democrat is white, we vote for the black Democrat. If it's a black Republican and a white Democrat, then we vote for the white Democrat, you know. Yeah. yeah. They're they're tied into that party line, tied into the party line. And yeah. and like I said, I know we're getting a little bit off base, but aren't there like nine or ten people running for mayor of Atlanta? And one of them is um Kasim Reed, the former mayor of Atlanta, who had his own issues with the feds and what he was doing and He's trying to make a comeback. I saw that. Oh my God! You sure it's not Kasim Reed Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a daughter, <laughs> so I don't oh, okay. it's not her. Yeah, and um, he and an ex-wife now, because when he ran, I think he had two terms. Um, when he had a second term, he ended up getting divorced from the lady who had his daughter, his his mm-hmm. his baby's mother, his daughter's mom. So, yeah, yeah that's a whole another thing. But he was indicted. He was you know, spending money he shouldn't have spent. He was investigated by the feds and everything. So if people vote that back in, you mm. know, you get, you know, you get the government you deserve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know.
Um, I know uh, earlier this week I came across a snippet of an article having to do with the um, with the something called the global minimum tax. And what that is in a nutshell, it is the tax rate that corporations are paying. Mm -hmm. So um, in this particular snippet, Ireland was the um, was the company that had the they had a 12 and a half percent tax rate on corporations. So that's saying Facebook, Google, mom and pop, whoever they were paying a 12 and a half percent corporate tax rate. So um, Ireland got in with the G, I think it's G7 and G20, and these the G7 and G20 companies decided to have a to raise the minimum corporate tax rate from 12 and a half percent. That was Ireland's, and now Ireland is increasing their corporate tax rate to 15 percent. So in this brief analysis, it was saying Ireland is going to lose about 2 billion euros in revenue because of that increase in corporate wow. tax rate. And folks were online asked, well, how does that make sense? You know, they're getting more money, blah, blah, blah. Well, you have to think about these corporations again, like we said before, you know, corporations don't pay taxes. They yeah. pass taxes through on the product to their customer. Ultimately, so, Unfortunately, so, you know, prices are going to go up and they're going to go up anyway, but now they're going to go up even more and probably fewer people are going to be buying the products. <laughs> yeah. So uh -huh. with that, products or services and with that, the corporation doesn't need as many um, people <laughs> to right. the service. So that can lead to layoffs and people have rent and mortgages and car notes and incidentals and utilities and everything that they pay for well if they don't have a job then they can't pay for those things right so what does that lead to well that leads to them probably getting on government assistance <laughs> you know at least for a moment until they can find another job and that that government assistance is going to cause um issues when they try to pay other bills because now they maybe they can't afford their car note even they're even though they're getting government assistance they can't afford their rent or their car note or their mortgage or that sort of thing so that's going to trickle down into other businesses that may have to lay off because huh. they don't have the um the services and the money and everything to support those people so it's a trickle down effect is what it is so long story short anytime people anytime there's an increase in tax rates that the government wants from companies or businesses there is going to be a loss somewhere right you know the, right. the the country is going to lose money um as i'm sitting here there's an article on the bbc that said um there were about 136 countries that agreed to do this now interesting enough um people the the countries that agreed to this minimum global minimum tax rate they are concerned, the governments are concerned that these companies like the Facebooks, the Googles, the Apples are rerouting their profits to um, what they say low tax jurisdictions. So places don't that don't charge a high is, is tax rate as 15%. Right. <laughs> so they're worried about that. So um, I'm reading through the article. Now, um, it's going to hit places like Amazon, Facebook, Google, that sort of thing. But as I go through, there are countries, and I'm trying to get to the one it is. Um, let's say th these are three countries, Ireland, Hungary, and H Estonia, have all agreed to that 15% rate. However, and I'm reading this word for word, Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka have not yet signed up to the plan. Now, that says that those countries have a lower tax rate than the 15% that wants to be instituted. So it would behoove those countries of Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka to keep their tax rates lower. So now those corporations can go and do whatever they need to do in those countries, maybe reinvest, maybe hire people, that sort of thing. So um, I thought it was interesting that you know, those just an example of those places that say, ah, oh, we're not necessarily on board 
with this 15% rate because we can keep our corporate tax rate lower and attract the Facebooks, the Googles, the Apples to their country. <laughs> so yeah. they can benefit from that. So um, I think that was interesting. And then on the flip side, there is um, the Argentine economy minister, who's Martin Guzman, said the 15% isn't enough. He said it needs to be 21%. So there you go, you know, again, it's oh, never, yeah. ever enough. Yeah. And Facebook, um, I think they put out a statement saying, oh, we're OK with paying more. We don't mind that sort of thing. Well, get this Facebook. No one said that you had to pay that twelve and a half percent or that 15. You are always free to pay more tax. But by compelling other companies to do the same thing, you know, they're they're um, kind of being a heavyweight on the other companies by compelling them to do the same thing. So I thought that and was just interesting. Also, also Facebook is is super rich company. Uh, Warren Buffett, he said the same thing when they're talking about raising taxes. He didn't mind paying more. Yeah, dude, you're the richest man in America. Right. So you, you, I mean, I want, I want him to have the choice. If he wants to do that, that's fine. But if, if his children live another 50 years, they can never spend half of his money. Right. So it's it's a different group. It's a different perspective. You know, I, I don't know if he's I don't know if he even is, is reinvesting, you know, or or looking to do anything in business. It's a different it's a different agenda. Definitely. You know, it Bill is. Gates, like he quit. Microsoft, him and his wife, they've been going around the planet for over 10 years just giving away money because he he knew he was smart enough to figure out it doesn't it doesn't make any sense for me personally to try to earn any more money. Like he he's he's playing a game of Brewster's millions, except it's Brewster's billions. Yeah. You know, if you can spend 30 billion in 30 days, we'll give you a hundred billion, you know. Right. Like he, he's yeah. he's trying to leave it all on the table and mm -hmm. trying to do some good. You know, uh, uh Zuckerberg and Warren Buffett, they're one percent of one percent yeah. of, of the richest. Right. But what I was gonna say about the the tax. And, and you were talking about the ramifications of that. What seems to be happening, apparently not just in the United States, but in some of these other countries, is they're trying to give the people what they want, try to pacify the people that want the the rich to be punished. Yes. And I'm, I'm envious. I want to take some of their gold and some of their ducats and spread it around and I'll feel a little better about equality and fairness and they don't know well that's the first thing that happens they raise the tax and then like you said it's like come in the come on in the front door and go out the back like right. you want to do that we're going to make you know the government they never talk about that they never talk about how the company is going to raise the price of their product no Ever. How the consumer's going to end up paying for it. Mm -hmm. they, they never do. And interesting enough, in this article, it mentioned how the um, global poverty rate has increased. Well, the only way you can decrease the global poverty rate is by, have peop is by having people work. I mean, that's yeah, just right. it. You know, give them skills, teach them trades, have them work. That's the only way it can be. You can't have these companies pay people because they're in poverty. Well, it's, <laughs> you know, the problem's deeper than that. So um, you can't continue to throw money at a problem and expect it to be solved. So um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Like you said, no one is stopping these companies from paying more, but don't compel me to pay more because you want to pay more. And that, that that's where the problem comes in, yeah. And if you, if you notice through the years as people get, they, they taxing the hell out of them, and if the stock market plummets and inflation comes and unemployment gets up to 10 percent, notice that the government is always doing very well. They never miss a check. Ever. Never, ever, ever. That's right. I also wouldn't be surprised that in the midst of a recession, they vote themselves a raise. Huh, that's happened before as well. So all these people that you think are stepping up to the plate and batting for you and fighting for you, they are they are not going to suffer. 
No, they never do. And in any in any communist country, in any communist or socialist country, no matter how oppressed the people are, the government is always doing fine. Always. Just ask Venezuela. We're now seventy yeah. percent of the people there are in extreme poverty, and we're talking yeah. eating your pets poverty. Yeah. So yeah, but the government's doing fine. So, so let's uh, let's go to this uh, video of the week. Uh, Joe bumbling, stumbling, okay. and talking more about. I mean, he, he's just, he's just trying to muddle through and make it through. <laughs> so I, I'll play this first, and then I'll make my my comment. What I notice is coming from the Democrats. Uh, more and more when they see this. So let's let's listen to Joe with uh, a few words that he had to say. This is taken from uh, the Brandon Tatum show, so you may you may hear a little bit of that. But check it out. All right. Leadership here, Lieutenant Governor Julius here, Stat Stratton, and the Ohio Pennsylvania, the Ohio Pennsylvania, I'm from Pennsylvania, the uh, the the Illinois president. Uh, of the, uh, Don Harmon, State Senator Laura Murphy, State Rep. Uh, um, Martin Mo uh, Mo Moylan, and uh, we got great labor leaders here too. Tim, well, where's Tim? There you go, Tim. Thank you, thank you, pal. FLCIO State President, and Jeff Isaacson, United Brothers of Carpenters, you and uh, Don Finn, IBW, uh, and uh, and Robert Reiter, Reader, Reader, R E I T E R, Rereaders. -E you know, if I can digress for just a second. Last night I was on the television. I, I, television. I was on the telephone. I'm, you know. <laughs> and that's Biden's commentary for this second wow. week of October. Wow. I wonder, did he have the piece of paper in front of them? In front of him with their names? No, no, oh. no. He he was he was reading that. That that's how he sounds okay. when he's reading the teleprompter. Oh my gosh! So okay. he was he was reader writer. Tim Tim, hey how you doing? Tim, I know you're out there somewhere. I just can't see you. Hey hey wow. hey buddy. Hey thanks thanks for voting for me. You'll get your ten thousand tomorrow night. Blah 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 blah. Wow. But what what I was gonna say is, uh, and then and then I'll let you speak on it. Is I'm I'm hearing uh, I'm hearing more from the left. I'm hearing Bill Maher. And people on CNN and uh, Stephanopoulos, you know, just just checking what we're seeing. That when the, the elephant in the room is bigger than the room and it's crushing you into the wall, you can't pretend it doesn't exist. You can't avoid it. Right. Batman and Robin were the focus that every everybody was looking after. You know, all the all the villains, all the bad guys were coming at them. Mm hmm. With, with with Trump being Batman, even though he was not working with Biden, you know, these are two main guys in the spotlight. Right. So Batman is gone now. When Batman is gone, everybody's coming for Robin. Right. Exactly. Because there's there's nothing else there. So yes. so now the, the election is is over and they vilified Trump and he's gone now. He can't get blamed for anything. They can try. They can try to blame him for Afghanistan, whatever, but he's gone. So now he is he is taking the, the center of the of the frame. Mm -hmm. And he can't he can't hide. He can't go in a basement. And and this this that I played from, that was that was just him speaking. He wasn't answering any questions again. No one is allowed to ask. You can raise your hand, but I ain't gonna call on you. Right. Right. So you're you're not gonna you know, I, I told you, I heard him say, I heard him say somewhere that he, he wasn't allowed to answer questions that weren't yes. pre-approved. Yes. And that's that's one of the papers that he carries in his pocket is <laughs> his uh, his his authorized list of things to <laughs> things to talk about, to talk about or the, the things that he's gotten the OK to stamp approval to say. Yes. In the end, you know, they have, um, you know, like you said, the Trump isn't there. They can't. They can talk about him, and that's the only reason their ratings go up is because they bring up his name. But he was the boogeyman that they all want to jump on, the common enemy that everybody wanted to jump on. But now he's gone. He's not there. He's not in the White House. He's not making policy. Biden undid, according to Biden's own words, undid everything Trump did. So now it's all Biden's, and they are just now getting to 
well, he's he's bumbling. He can't speak. He doesn't answer my questions. This was this was February first, where people right. were asking this and having this issue. <laughs> so y'all are just now getting to that. It'll be interesting to see when they get to Afghanistan. You know, because there are still yeah. people left in Afghanistan right now. You know, there are still forty one school children in Afghanistan as we speak right now. Right. Um, this afternoon on, I think it was Sebastian Gorka. I heard him say that, or I heard a guest of his say that the um, guest interpreter said that the Taliban hung a seven-year-old child because he had Jesus dollar Christ. bills in his, because pocket, what? his pocket. Because he had dollar bills in his pocket. American US dollars? American dollars. And then they hung him and put the American dollars in his mouth. So this, this is who the Taliban is. This is who... Biden has now propelled into the 21st century. This you know, is who we're negotiating with. This and is we have a deal exactly, a deal with the Taliban. Exactly. Exactly. So I wonder when the press is finally going to get to Afghanistan. And maybe, you know, after a few months after they get to Afghanistan, maybe they'll get to the border. Who knows? Maybe something else will blow up by then because we cannot seem to go a month without something happening with this incompetent leadership in the White House. So. <laughs> so, so much I want to say before I forget, <laughs> Cam Cam, oh, she said like within the last month, she mm -hmm. said, don't come to the border. She said, no, I know everything. <laughs> forget what you heard. We know about the last nine, 10 months. Mm -hmm. Don't come to the border. Whoever's running for president on a Republican ticket, and it may be Trump, but whoever, whoever it is, whoever gets the nomination 2024, they need to play the video of her saying that. Just, just don't come to the border. That's right. what she said. Don't come to the border. So, so we don't need a wall. We don't need border patrol and all that sort of stuff. Oh. We just need her saying, "Don't come to the border." Okay. Uh, well, no, no. I'm you. saying, like she, she's talking to Mexicans. No. Oh. But th this is contradicting and flip flopping what they were saying when they were printing the Biden T-shirts, saying, "Come on over as Biden's America." Yes. Where they, where they were encouraging them to come. So yes. if I were running for president, I would say, thank you, Cam Cam, for agreeing with me. Roll a clip. Right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You, you said this. You said yes. this. Why, why did you say it? Right. I, I wanted to mention that about uh, Kamala. But the other thing, did you know that since Trump left office, CNN's ratings have been have dropped more than half? Oh, wow. It's about time. Oh, the, the total CNN good. ratings. So, I mean, we know like with January 6th and the so-called insurrection, <laughs> but soon after January 20th and Biden took office, yeah. you know, when, when Trump was gone, gone, and there's really nothing for them to cover on him. Right. You're absolutely like right. The, the, ratings, the ratings have gone down. Yeah. That, that's their people have stopped watching. <laughs> because the villain has exit left. Right, exit stage left. Now they're stuck with their bad decisions. Oh, and one more thing I heard today um, that I want to say Google is now not allowing people who deny climate change. They're not allowing them on their network. So I want to say right. Google and, and YouTube. They're going to cancel all my accounts. <laughs> so uh, if anybody wants to email us send it to brute honest radio at gmail.com because next week we might not have that address <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be on here or spotify and yes and uh, other platforms telling people what the new address is if we had to change it absolutely <laughs> we'll stay in contact yeah well, uh, it's uh, kind of a big deal. It is the 100th episode. We're proud of that. And what we're going to do now is go into some of the best moments, some uh, audio of things that have come out over the last couple of years, and also what I thought was our best uh, commentary, just the best moments of this show we have compiled and put together in a, this episode. Check it out, and uh, we'll come back and talk to y'all at the end of the show and tell you some more. Check it. The Democrat Party has a pimp-hole relationship with their voters. 
Okay, so first of all, a pimp makes his woman go out and earn money and give it to him. She gives him all the money that she makes. She's an able-bodied citizen. She's got talents and things that she could do other than that. But the pimp makes her think that he needs her. A pimp has to use psychology and is making her think that she needs him. If she ever talks about leaving him, or if he even thinks that she wants to leave him, the pimp's narrative is, you ain't nothing with me. You ain't no good. You will never make it. You will never amount to anything. You can't do nothing without me. You without me is like cornflake without the milk. You without me is like Harold Melvin without the blue notes. You never go platinum. If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I'm trying to make a connection here. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Now, the pimp, he never gives the woman the cash. He'll give her gifts. He'll give her food stamps. He'll give her different things. He may even make her feel rich. Take her on trips to Las Vegas, or Dubai, uh, Niagara Falls, and make her feel like a queen. Put expensive dresses on her, but he'll never give her the cash. And the reason is because he doesn't want her to really be free or to save up the money and leave him. You know, save, invest, put it into into something else. So he creates the illusion of her being valuable. And I'm telling people that this is the same relationship that the Democrats have with their Democrat voters. What what is a pimp without a hoe? I mean, where does he get his money from? How can he survive? It's his bread and butter. It's his livelihood. So him him making money and staying employed as a pimp is dependent on the whole being his slave and doing what he wants her to do and controlling her. And I just, you know, I noticed many similarities and uh, uh, connections between that. So I, I just want I want people to look at look at their lives, look at where they've casted their votes, what they've gotten in return. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that's wow. That's an interesting analysis. It really is. And I'll add to that. It, they make the their voters feel powerless just like a pimp would do to his prostitute they make them feel powerless about Pepe Le Pew (laughs) the latest uh, poor little guy to get cancelled people uh, people know Pepe Le Pew from Looney Tunes he goes back to the 1940s or 50s and you were the first one who I heard this from, and then I've since heard it on other conservative news and other stories. When you first told me that he was being canceled, I thought it was because of the stereotype of French people having body odor, okay? No. <laughs> because that's why they made him French. Yes. Right? And, and I know that uh, France is one of the countries where we have listeners of people are downloading, mm-hmm. all right? But the stereotype and reputation in the United States is that they don't believe in deodorant. Yes. You know, the women, uh, they don't shave under their arms. And the the running joke is when you're stinking, you can't smell your own stuff. (laughs) So, you know, he was never aware. He would never find out, you know, how bad he stank. Right. right. (laughs) So. I I thought that was it, and it was offensive to the French. But, of course, that's not in the United States. So that's not where the complaining came from. And then you told me it's because of him basically uh, harassing female felines. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I said, oh, my God, this this bothered somebody and offended somebody. Uh, we we got to cancel him because he's trying to crossbreed with cats. There you go. That's why he's got to be canceled. With the Micaiah Bryant case and a few more things that have come out and just some more that I've had to think about 
and looking at the situation. The police officer is being criticized and onlookers and people that don't have anything to do with law enforcement or don't understand being in that situation, never had a gun pointed at them, never been in a fight, never been in an emergency like that, are criticizing the officer. So my first question is, what would you want done if that was your daughter who was being threatened with someone having a knife to her head? And the police show up. How would you want the police to handle it? Anyone who looks at the video has to honestly say that there was a great chance that Micaiah Bryant was going to stab or cut this girl had the police officer not shot her. And it's easy to believe that because right before that, a young man kicks a girl in the head who's on the ground. I won't even kick another man in the head while he's down. And he knows that the police are there. Clearly, uniform officer is right in front of him. No respect for law or authority. So this guy who has mommy issues, who hates his mama, is there kicking a woman. And it's, it's several people fighting. So anyway, that's the first thing. You, you got to put yourself in other people's shoes sometimes. And what would what would you want to do if that was your daughter or your sister or anybody that you cared about? The other thing is, you know, there, there seems to be so much complaining about white police officers shooting black people. Black people called the police. Somebody black, somebody from that neighborhood who saw that this was breaking out, they said, we need the police here. Maybe when people call the police, if they want to get shot by a black cop instead of a white cop, or they don't want a white cop to shoot anybody, no matter what happens, maybe they need to specify that when they call 911. They say, hello, what's your emergency? Yeah, I need two units over here right now. Send black ones only. Or whatever you do, don't send white cops. And then give them the rest of the information. This is my address, blah, blah, blah. All right. Because it's it's made about race and about color. AOC, she is explaining and justifying the behavior of the looters. What okay. She, yeah. What does she say? So she's saying that the reason that people are are looting, breaking into stores, and stealing is because they're not making a decent livable wage. So they have to steal food in order to feed their families. <laughs> Can you they know. buy phones? I mean, Target? They're not really <laughs> they, a grocery store. You know. Right? Are they <laughs> eating shoes? I mean <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so this this is the message the message here is it's uh, it's not even about it's not even about Floyd or about people being angry. It's about the minimum wage is not fifteen dollars an hour or more. You know the government has not fixed this, and because the government has not made this a, a certain amount of money, that people people are going out and looting and shoplifting. Mm -hmm. This was two days ago, right? Heard it on the radio mm -hmm. and uh, about this girl, nine years old, got pepper sprayed by police in Rochester, New York. Right now, and you gonna take your ass in the house. Oh, 
unpack this I'll, I'll throw some things out there um number one what a household um that nine-year-old kid has probably seen things i haven't seen before ever in life um that she probably sees on a daily monthly <laughs> basis number two i can bet that the child has been told don't trust the police because they're not good for you um when at the same time the police are there and they're trying to, they're the ones who can help her out of that situation and kind of make it better for her. So um, that was interesting. And number three, as I listened further into the, um, into that particular incident, the child knows how to say what needs to be said. And to say that for one time, she said, I want to see my dad. I want to see my dad. Another time is I need a sworn officer or something like that. Another time was um, I have a bad arm. Another time was I have um, snow or something on me or I'm cold or that sort of thing. So the, the idea that a child would keep coming up with reasons and excuses for not doing what they're supposed to do under this particular circumstance. The girl said that she stabbed her dad and I believe the girl because she didn't say mm -hmm. I think I saw right that like he might have been hurt or might have been bleeding or he grabbed his stomach she said she stabbed my dad yeah it is like a very matter of fact exactly. mm -hmm. all right and then people that are engaged in domestic abuse they cover for each other you know with the thing about the black eye and I walked into a door and all yes. of that all mm -hmm. right so no, the, the mother said, that's my blood. That was my lip. My lip busted because she's mm -hmm. fighting with the father. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So so that's, that's why you see us fight all the time. Don't you know right. my lip got bloody? That's that's not because I've pulled out a knife. Right. Yeah. And so the daughter says, so wait, lip made it all the way from your blood all the way down to his stomach. I mean, all the way from your lips down to his stomach. Okay. Yes. The mother said. We were fighting on the porch. Mm -hmm. Me and your father were fighting on the porch. And then, and then I clearly heard the mother say, he puts his hands on me all the time. It's you. We, we always fight. That's nothing new. Why are you making a big deal out of this? We're always fighting. First of all, any, any couple, any man and woman that are throwing fists, you need to not be living in the same place. But I don't Absolutely. think they are living in the same place because the mother said, I got custody. Mm -hmm. Custody is a word that comes up when people have separate residences. Now, I want to talk about the Amy Coney Barrett confirmation hearings. Interview, or uh, rather interrogation, is what they should have called it. Um, and what you're going to hear is <laughs> Senator John Kennedy, nothing like JFK, but he got the same name. And I'll just play that first, and then we'll, we're going to talk about this piece. So the, the man that you hear talking to, Amy Coney Barrett, mm -hmm. is uh, Senator John Kennedy. Talk about the oath that you will take. If you're confirmed and sworn in as an associate justice of the United States Supreme Court, what's in that oath? What's it say? Well, that oath requires a judge, you know, I've taken the oath as a judge to do equal justice to all, you know, without fear or favor, you know, regardless of wealth, um, you know, to, to fairly apply the law is what it boils down to, to not give preferential treatment or express bias in plain terms. It says you'll administer the law in an impartial manner without regard to your personal feelings, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Senator. It says you will support and defend the Constitution, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to uh, take that oath and affirm it if you're confirmed? 
Yes. You're not lying. I'm not lying. I took that oath before I began as a judge on the Seventh Circuit, and I have not violated that oath, and I would take it again, and oaths are serious to me. Well, now, Senator Harris just called you a liar. She said that if you take that oath, you'll be lying, that you've already made up your mind how you're going to vote on some cases, particularly dealing with, with abortion and the Affordable Care Act. Let's just cut to the chase. She said you're a liar. Are you a liar? I am not a liar, Senator Kennedy. All right, I want you to tell me again, look me in the eye here in front of God and country. If you take that oath, will you mean it? I will mean it. If I take that oath, I will mean it. You swear to God? I swear to God. And you'll, I have sworn at the Seventh Circuit. And I meant it there, too. You'll never break that oath. I will not break that oath. No matter what your personal feelings are. No matter what my personal feelings. No matter what your religion is. No matter what my religion is. So when Senator Harris and her colleagues say you're a liar, they're wrong. They are. Okay. That's always hard to listen to. And uh, it's upsetting, was upsetting to me to hear that. And uh, it's, uh, she doesn't deserve that. Mm -hmm. um, man, this guy, John Kennedy, all right, with this, uh, with this voice talking like Bull Connor or George Wallace or somebody out of the 1960s. There's there's so much wrong with this. This woman hasn't hasn't done anything. She hasn't done anything to deserve this. Mm -hmm. And when I'm listening to this, I'm imagining someone being dragged with with their hands tied, dragged by a rope from a horse, face down. When I'm seeing this, mm -hmm. and I, I've I've never seen anything like this. When uh, when Obama appointed Sonia. A Soto Mayor to the Supreme Court. Did anyone talk to her like that? Not at all. They did not. I mean, this guy, he's, he's asking her the same question seven different times. Because the first six times weren't good enough. And then why are you telling me what some Kamala Harris said about me being a liar? Mm -hmm. That's like me saying, hey, Inger, this liar over here said you're a liar. <laughs> right. Kamala Harris, a political whore, mm -hmm. said more shameful things in the last two months than I could ever say about Biden. So she's not lying when she says you're a liar. Well, you can't believe anything a liar says. If Harris says the moon is, is up, it might be high noon. Right. I mean, this, this, this woman is a, is a judge. She's been a judge for years. And, uh, you know, because of what someone else says. I mean, if, if that isn't browbeating, I don't know what is. If somebody can can define for me the the definition of badgering, you know, like when there's a court case going on and there's somebody on the witness stand, and as soon as badgering starts, the prosecution or the defense will say they're badgering the witness, and then right away, ironically, a judge has to say overruled or sustained. Someone who is on a witness stand in court. Who, who is being tried for murder. Mm -hmm. They will not be spoken to the way this woman was spoken to. Yeah. That's right. That is that's absolutely right. It was, um, it's atrocious. But yeah, it's, it's disgusting the way they treated her. Thank you so much for listening to the best of Brutally Honest Talk Radio as we celebrate our 100th episode. And with that, please share with your friends. Um, don't forget to hit the notification button so you'll be notified when a new episode is uploaded. And also be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. And, you know, we're also on Libsyn. So you can hear us on the podcast. You can get us both both video and audio. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
and uh, thank you again, uh, everyone that, that finds value in this and keeps coming back. So uh, I just want to talk about and make sure that people check us out on the next episode next week, because we're going to do an episode dedicated to North Korea and situation is going on there. I will prove that this is the worst country on the planet, even compared to Afghanistan. So I'm going to talk about the regime and things that are going on with, with them. And also uh, we're going to hear some of the testimony and story of one of the refugees. This is a real whistleblower whose life is in danger, lives in the United States now. And I learned a lot from what she was saying has been going on there for basically everybody. It's, it's an emotional story and hopefully it'll be an eye opener uh, to people about what's going on over there. Thank you for listening to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at brutehonestradio at gmail.com. That's B R U T. Honest Radio at gmail.com.